Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing beta thalassemia. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, you can find all of our hemoc lectures for the step one. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because we like to post brand new step one content videos for you guys every single day, baby. All right. So with that being said, let's talk about microcytic anemias. These are going to be anemias that have an MCV that's going to be less than 80, which is means you can have a small red blood cell compared to the normal red blood cell. And these are all going to be due to defects in hemoglobin synthesis. So what can cause a defect in hemoglobin synthesis? Well, you can have defective heme synthesis or defective globin chains. Now, we have already talked about all of these topics. Now, we are going to be talking about beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia deals with the beta globin chain specifically, and uh, that's something you definitely, definitely need to know. So what is beta thalassemia? Beta thalassemia is a hereditary hemoglobin disorder, and in step one, most of these patients are going to present from Africa or from the middle, uh, sorry, the uh, Mediterranean era area. That is what you're going to see on the vignette. Now, the beta globin chain is going to have gene point mutations in beta thalassemia. And these point mutations are going to occur in the promoter region or the splicing sites. In alpha thalassemia, let's write this down. For alpha thalassemia, you're going to have gene deletions, meaning the whole gene is going to be deleted. In beta thalassemia, you're going to have point mutations. So all this is my favorite acronym, high yield as fuck, because you might be tested on this while you're studying or while you're taking the exam. You need to know the genetics behind beta and alpha thalassemia. Now, keep in mind that, he, that the globin chains are made up of two pairs, either an alpha or a beta uh, chain. So let's review this also. You have hemoglobin adult, hemoglobin A1, hemoglobin A2, the, the adult forms. You have the fetal form, hemoglobin F. And then you have forms where you don't have any alpha chain production. So these are these two, hemoglobin H and hemoglobin Barnes. In hemoglobin A1, you're going to have two alpha chains and two beta chains. Hemoglobin A2, you're going to have two alpha chains and two delta chains. Hemoglobin F, you're going to have two alpha chains and two gamma chains. Now, in hemoglobin H and hemoglobin Barts, these are due to knockouts of the alpha chain, especially the alpha genes. And uh, in hemoglobin H, you're going to have three gene deletions. Okay, so you're going to have only one alpha gene available, and that's going to lead to a pri uh, primarily beta chain hemoglobin, so a beta 4. And hemoglobin Barts occurs during the fetal stage, and it's going to lead, it's going to be caused due to four alpha chain gene deletions, and it's going to present with gamma 4 because this is a fetal type of disorder that occurs in the fetus, and it's going to lead to high drops fatalis. So in beta thalassemia, you're not going to have a proper production of the beta chain, and mainly this is going to affect hemoglobin A1. Hemoglobin A2, F are also going to be normal or high depending on the situation that we're going to be talking about. Now, as far as the beta chain is concerned, it is located on chromosome 11 and has two genes. Alpha, the alpha chain was located on chromosome 16 and had four genes associated with it, like we said earlier. So these are things you definitely need to know, an overview of beta thalassemia. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about the, the few conditions associated and the few types of beta thalassemia. Number one, you have beta thalassemia minor. Beta thalassemia minor occurs due to one gene deletion. That is what's happening. You have one gene that is being deleted. This is going to be the mild form of the disease. You're going to have diminished beta globin chain production, not completely reduced, but diminished, and that is very important. And uh, most patients are going to be asymptomatic. You will see an increase in the red blood cell count because your body is going to be producing more in order to get normal hemoglobin uh, molecules so you can carry oxygen in your blood. And the diagnosis for this can be confirmed via hemoglobin electrophoresis. You're going to see a decrease in, in hemoglobin A1. Hemoglobin A1, as you may recall, is a, a, has two alpha chains and two beta chains. And because you are reducing the amount of beta chains, you are going to have decreased A1. But you will have increase in hemoglobin A2 and fetal hemoglobin. So that should clue you in to beta thalassemia minor. Again, you have a decrease in hemoglobin A1, not a complete knockout. 
Now, the other type of beta thalassemia is called beta thalassemia major, right? This means you have two gene deletions. It's that simple. Either you can have minor or major. And it's all based off of the number of gene deletions you can have. And because there are only two genes in the beta globin chain, you can only have two uh, gene deletions leading to beta thalassemia mi uh, major. So this is going to be the more severe form of the gene. And you're going to have absent and no beta globin production because you don't have the gene for the beta globin uh, chain. Now, this is going to lead to severe microcytic hyperchromatic anemia. You're going to see target cells and anisopoikilocytosis. That is a mouthful. But what that means is you have abnormal shape and size of red blood cells. Recall back to our video about the pathologic forms of red blood cells. We talked about these uh, types of red blood cells. And, the, and uh, anisopoikilocytosis just means you're going to have abnormal shape and size. Now, this is what a target cell is going to look like. Oh, by the way, these patients are going to require blood transfusions, like I said. Now, this is what a target cell looks like. As you can see, it looks like you have a target in the red blood cell. It looks like the target logo. Hence, it is named uh, a target cell. Not named after the store, but it just looks like a target. So it's pretty straightforward. Anyways, these are associated with several conditions like hemoglobin C, asplenia, meaning the spleen has either been removed or has uh, it does not function properly. The liver disease can cause target cells. Thalassemia, specifically beta thalassemia major, which presents with both gene knockouts and iron deficiency anemia can also lead to target cells and as far as beta thalassemia major is concerned there are some other uh, uh, findings you need to know in this condition because these patients are going to have abnormal functioning hemoglobin and they're uh, not going to have enough uh, functioning red blood cells you're going to have marrow expansion and the bone marrow is going to expand in the bigger bones in our body. So in the face and the skull is the classic presentation of bone marrow expansion. These patients are going to present with chipmunk facies and a crew cut look on the skeletal x-ray, all because the bone marrow is not proliferating in order to produce more red blood cells and it's going to cause an expansion of the bone marrow. And this is what crew cut look on skeletal x-ray looks like. As you can see here is the skull, but you still have this proliferation of bonus, uh, bony material that makes it look like uh, the skull has a crew cut and that just means it's ha uh, you have bone marrow expansion happening like we said right here. Now, because you need to produce more red blood cells and your bone marrow starts functioning to the highest degree with the expansion, you are going to need to continuously produce more blood cells. So where else can you produce blood cells? It's going to be uh, all your extra medullary locations. So you are going to have extra medullary hematopoiesis and that's going to occur in the liver and the uh, spleen. So this can cause hepatosplenomegaly and these patients are going to be at a higher risk of developing a parvovirus B19 infection. Very important. So these main two things, okay, bone marrow expansion and extramedullary hematopoiesis with beta thalassemia major is very, very important. So when it comes to beta thalassemia major, these patients are going to need chronic transfusions in order to survive. They don't have proper hemoglobin production. They don't have beta chain production at all. And in order for them to survive, they need hemoglobin, obviously. So you're going to give them chronic transfusions. So what else is in the blood transfusions you're giving them? Iron. And that's going to lead them to secondary uh, hemochromatosis. Excuse me. Because they are getting the chronic transfusions, they are getting an increase of iron and our body doesn't really have a way of getting rid of iron and that's going to lead to secondary hemochromatosis. Now, these patients are often going to present after six months of age. The reason why is because they have fetal hemoglobin, which is going to protect them up until six months. And afterwards, the patient is not going to be able to produce any beta globin chains, and that's going to reduce the production of functioning hemoglobin. It will lead to an increase in hemoglobin F and hemoglobin A2. Recall hemoglobin A2 consists of two alpha chains and two delta chains. However, it is not going to be enough to sustain them for life. And another thing to understand is that this is not the only type of beta thalassemia. You can also have beta thalassemia occurring with a concurrent disease. So what other very common disease occurs in uh, the beta chain? It's called hemoglobin S, aka sickle cell disease. So hemoglobin S and the beta thalassemia heterozygo is also another thing you should know. This is very simple, okay? Don't overconfuse it. Don't uh, make it difficult for yourself. 
where just think where does a uh, sickle cell anemia occur why does it occur well it occurs due to a point mutation on the beta globin chain of hemoglobin right that's the same thing that's happening with beta thalassemia both of these are going to be point mutations on chromosome uh, sorry chromosome 11 that's what's happening. So because chromosome 11 is occurring, you can have uh, one uh, gene leading to hemoglobin S and another gene leading to beta thalassemia. Now in this case, in this case, you are going to see mild to moderate sickle cell disease. Mild to moderate. And the reason why is because it's going to depend on the beta globin chain production. If your beta thalassemia is mild, you're going to produce normal, not normal, but you're going to produce reduced number of uh, beta globin chains. And that can produce normal hemoglobin A1 leading to a mild form of sickle cell. If the beta thalassemia gene is a more aggressive form, if that uh, beta thalassemia disease is more aggressive, it'll lead to a more moderate form of sickle cell disease. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. That's pretty much everything you need to know for beta thalassemia. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we will pop up, folks.